Hey everyone, it's Gary here from Echidna Sewing and today I'm going to be introducing to you a, uh, a really cool new product from Brother. It's called the Dynamic Walking Foot and it fits pretty much all the entire Brother range of home sewing machines. Now, uh, a walking foot, I know a lot of you are asking, yep, I've heard about it, not sure what it does. So I'm gonna give you a little lesson on how this, uh, the feeding system works on a typical sewing machine. So let's start by looking at this guy here. It's just a, a, a little um, sewing and embroidery combo machine, but right now I've got it set in sewing mode and I've actually taken the presser foot off the machine. So here's our typical presser foot. I've taken it completely off the machine so I can show you the feeding mechanism. And this is the feeding mechanism right here. And you can see the feeders are currently in the top position or up position. And a lot of people call them feed dogs, feed teeth, whatever you want to call them. It doesn't really matter, but that's what they do. They feed the fabric. And when the machine's stitching, the feeders simply move below the plate as the needle's down. Needle starts to rise. The feeders come to the front. They come up above the plate. And at this point, grab the fabric, which of course is pressing against the presser foot that is also sitting on the machine. I've taken it off just for a moment so you can see more clearly, but they start from the front and move back, drag the fabric through, and then as the needle comes down, they descend back below the needle plate and they do the cycle again and again and again. And you need one of those revolutions for every stitch that's formed. Now, if I was to quickly put this foot back on the machine, you'll see that the, the pressure, and I'll just try and keep my hands out of the way, We'll pop that down there, tighten that screw up. I'm sorry if my hand's in the way, but I just want to put the foot back on. So typically now, when the foot is in position and we lower the foot onto the what would be fabric sitting between the two, the presser feet, the presser uh, of the or the the pressure of the feed dogs is pushing up against the presser foot, which is pushing down, and then together they drag the fabric through. But sometimes you'll get fabrics that are just really difficult, like um, a thick fabrics, quilt sandwiches, where you're, you if you're a quilter, you'll know what I mean there. But but uh, layered fabrics, fabrics that tend to slip all over the place, rubber back curtains that tend to grip and not feed very well. And that whole process, typical process of, of compressing the fabric between the feeders and the presser foot means that the fabric is a bit unruly and it doesn't get um, pulled through very well. So enter a walking foot. Now, typically a walking foot might look like this on a home sewing machine. This is a very standard uh, generic type of foot and it's okay. Um, it's, uh, it basically has a, a presser foot on the bottom. But the big thing with these guys is they have a, a set of feeders on the top. And if I was to put that on the machine, this little arm here will actually engage on the needle bar, it goes up and down and it drags the, the feeders up and down with it. So that's a traditional presser foot. And I'm not gonna show you that one because I, I wanna show you the new dynamic foot from Brother, which looks very much the same, but here's the difference. It is incredibly well built. It is a, um, it's an all metal construction foot and uh, weighs almost twice the weight of the, uh, the standard sort of foot. But same principle, it has a set of feeders on top and a little arm that drives up and down with the needle bar. So I'm gonna show you in detail how we would actually put this on the machine. Now this is the dynamic walking foot from Brother and once we get it on there, I'll show you a bit more about just how easy it is to use. Now the first thing we need to do is you take the presser foot completely off the machine. That is the standard presser foot. And to do that, you will need to undo the screw and take the shank off. That's the whole shank and the actual foot itself. And if we separate that, you'll see that's the shank and that's the standard sewing foot. So we've taken them right away. We don't need them. Now, looking at this little guy here, you'll see there's the little arm that drives up and down with the needle bar. It's like a little fork in it. And then there's the shank of the foot that go, that attaches to the presser bar. And now we've just got to take that around and pop the shank on where the screw is. And also the little black bar just under here, that, or the fork that goes over the needle set screw bar. And now that we've got that in place, we just nip that up with the screwdriver. Sorry if my hand is in the way, but um, unfortunately I've got to do the screwdriver, the screw up. Now, whenever you're change or tightening that screw, be sure to tighten it very securely because the last thing you want is that coming loose while you're sewing. Now, if we have a closer look at this now, you'll see that if I put the presser foot down, we've still got a sole, um, a, a sole on the actual foot itself. That's that bit there. Right now though, if we turn our wheel, the feeders are up. So the, the feed dogs on the machine are up and they're in contact with the black feed dogs that are on the actual presser foot, the walking foot. And you'll notice that now 
the sole of the foot is actually loose. It's not really applying any pressure to the fabric because the two feeders have come together to basically drag the fabric through the machine. And that's how a press the walking foot works. So if we turn that over by hand, you'll see the needle has gone down. But at that point, because the needle's down and it's, being, and it's uh, driving this little arm here, it has now lifted the feet on the top of the on the top of the uh, fabric, which are the feet or the feeders rather, on the um, walking foot, and so they are no longer engaged with the fabric. But as the needle starts to come up, the f the lower feed dogs will start to now come up above the plate again, and the feed teeth on the walking foot will also go down, and they engage with the feeders again. And again, the sole the, or the foot. The sole of the foot on the machine, on the um, walking foot, is not in contact with the fabric. It's actually quite loose, but that's what we want. We repeat the cycle, and you'll see how that all works. And we might do a real close-up as I run this in slow motion, and you'll see exactly how it works. It'll just do a few stitches, but you'll see what happens. And that's how a walking foot actually works. Now. I mentioned um, all those difficult fabrics and quilt sandwiches and things that are a challenge sometimes to sew. And with a walking foot, you can actually get a much better control of the fabric and it'll feed even the most difficult fabrics through nice and smoothly and neatly. Now, one of the issues that we always had was that uh, the, the, the basic standard walking feet were very good for just doing a forward stitch. So you could do a straight stitch or a zigzag moving forward. But the minute you had to reverse, they didn't really like that. And so you, you, you sort of didn't want to do too much back tacking and you certainly wouldn't try running any decorative stitches on difficult fabrics. Now, that's where the dynamic walking foot makes a really big difference because the construction of this allows for it to, the, the feeders on the top on the walking foot to actually go backwards and forwards. And that means if we're going to do a decorative, any of the decorative stitches on difficult fabrics or thicker fabrics, we can now use a walking foot to do that and get a perfect result. So let's stop. I'm going to put in, um, put in a stitch and show you just what I mean there. Okay, so what I've done is I've chosen a built-in decorative stitch on this machine, and this is a stitch that will tend to have a backwards and forwards motion. And I have actually changed back to the standard kind of normal walking foot that you would get for most machines. Now, um, I'm not going to adjust anything on the machine. I'm going to leave it as it is, and we're going to see how this performs using the standard walking foot. Now, I do stress, I don't recommend you do this. If you've got a standard walking foot at home, don't use it for this stitch. I'm only doing this to show you the difference. So, because uh, you could damage the foot if you if you have some prolonged use doing it. So, so we're ready to go. I don't need to change anything. I'm just going to hit the go button and we'll see what actually happens. So this is the standard walking foot. We'll run a few stitches down. So you can see the result. And this is how walking feet have been forever. Uh, you really don't use them for decorative stitches, although it's tempting because on difficult fabrics, um, it's really hard to get a decorative stitch working terribly well. So let's trim that and see what we've got. Take that out and there's the result. And that doesn't really look too much like what we tried to stitch. Now, I haven't adjusted anything. I've just let the machine do its thing. And um, obviously we wouldn't be happy with that. So give me a moment. I'll change over to the uh, dynamic walking foot. And again, we might just go through that changing process. So undo the screw on the uh, that holds the shank on and undo that far enough to get that off. Make sure the foot is up. The screw needs to come out a little bit further to get that around the shank, around the, the, the shaft there. Take that away. So watching carefully again, we've got the little lever that drives the, the feeders up and down. It goes over the needle bar, where the needle bar set screw is, and the shank goes in where the foot is, and I'll, where the foot should go. Then we get our screwdriver, nip that up nice and firm. Again, always make sure that is firm. And always make sure the screwdriver you're using is comfortable and sits in the slot well. Otherwise, you tend to not, they tend to be a bit unruly. Okay, so the dynamic walking foot is on now. Let's have a look at the difference. Without changing a thing, we'll just stitch that down beside there. Same stitch. Should have started at the new pattern, but it doesn't matter. I 
can already tell this is actually a bit quieter than the standard foot. It feels smoother, although you can't really feel that on the camera, on the, on the video, but I can tell you it certainly does sound and, and feel better here in studio. So we'll do a... I can already tell you it looks perfect and of course that's what we expected. One more pattern and we'll stop that just there. Hit the trimmer button, take that out and look at the difference. Isn't that amazing? That's exactly what the stitch should look like. So that's a real plus on the dynamic walking foot. Um, and I don't think I've seen a walking foot come out ever in the 40 years I've had that has been able to do that. So uh, kudos to Brother for developing that. And it will work on pretty much any Brother model. Um, and if you've got one of the newer, bigger machines with a high shank foot, you will need to use the shank adapter, which is um, readily available. In fact, some machines actually already come with that. Uh, so that is the dynamic walking foot. And let's have a look at a, another little uh, benefit of it or, or another reason why it's so good. I mentioned before, it's made from a, a much more or a much more sturdy or tough construction. And if I just take that off again to, to highlight that, I've got a little set of scales here. We might just have a look at, um, at how they uh, how it measures in the weight terms. It's a good way to tell how much metal's in a in a product. Here's the standard foot. So if we weigh that, uh, that weighs in at 45.6 grams. Take that off. And this new one, which I can tell you is much heavier, weighs in at 78 grams. So um, not quite twice as heavy, but that means there is a lot more metal construction in that foot. And you can just tell by the, the feel and the look of it. It's just a beautifully, beautifully designed product. And uh, I think for a serious sewer, something that we all should have. But it's, it's when you do those difficult fabrics, again, like those rubber back curtains and um, vinyls and leathers and um, big thick quilt sandwiches, that's when a walking foot comes to, to the fore and uh, definitely worth having a look at the dynamic walking foot should you be after one. Um, have a look at it on our website, guys. It's uh, the, the, whatever the current price is will be on there, of course. And um, it's, as always, with Brother Products, superb quality. And if you have any questions about it at all, just a matter of giving us a call. Oh, and I should point out too, I forgot to mention this. It does come with both a standard sole for you, the, the presser foot sole for normal, stitching and also an open toe sole plate so that gives you more visibility when you're doing difficult work and that's standard in the pack it's uh, it, it's actually a real good bonus there to have that so uh, so there you go that's the dynamic walking foot any questions get in touch with touch with us the normal ways happy sewing everyone and we'll talk to you next time cheers <laughs>